The power play cable issue. It's the one thing that keeps me up at night, my mortal enemy. We have workarounds like my 3D printed spacers, but I really want to solve it once and for all. And today, we're gonna do just that. So I've been doing a lot of research on the different standards of 3.5 millimeter jack. And long story short, it's a huge mess, mainly caused by camcorder and phone manufacturers in the 90s, wanting to sell more proprietary cables. Those greedy bastards. The good news is that I've finally got somewhere. And if you have a VX and you just want a cable that will work without a spacer, it would seem that you're in luck. I've linked some down in the description that should work. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to test them myself as the eBay gods haven't been on my side. So if you pick one up, let me know in the comments how you get on. If you've got a camera with the 3.5 mm AV jack like my TLV900 or GL2, there's a bit more to the story, but I've still figured out a solution with no soldering involved. I know how you all hate soldering. Pussies. Right, get your learning hat on. Here's how these cables work. There's multiple types of 3.5 mm jack, but the one we're interested in is called TRRS. This stands for tip, ring, ring, sleeve, and if you look at the jack, it's not hard to figure out why. Inside the cable, there's four smaller wires that attach to the tip, the rings, and the sleeve. As you know, the power play is designed to work with FPV goggles and not camcorders. The most prominent brand of FPV goggle is Fat Shark, and since day one, they've used this configuration for their 3.5 mm AV out. My goggles are made by Eosheen, and they use the same layout. I'm pretty sure this is called OMTP, or Open Mobile Terminal Platform, and was commonly found on Nokia phones back in the days of headphone jacks and week-long battery life. The most common camcorder standard is right audio, ground, video, left audio. If we line these up, you can see why the cable works when not pushed all the way in, albeit with the audio channels reversed. This doesn't matter on the power play as it down mixes to mono. So in theory, an OMTP or Fatshock specific AV cable should do the trick for the VX. For 3.5mm AV outs, I picked up a couple of these handy TRRS to screw terminal adapters. I rearranged the wires on the cable included with the power play, and hey presto, here's what you need to do. First, snip off one of the jacks. Keep in mind, when we're done, this cable will be directional, so you have to think about which one you're going to keep. I kept the right angled one. Then remove the shielding from the cable. You can use a knife, scissors, or wire strippers, but I found I could just manage with my fingernail. You can use a fingernail to expose a bit of wire on the end of each one. Unfortunately, these wires are not in the obvious colors, but instead pastel orange, green, blue, and gray. I pissed around with a multimeter for a long time before figuring out that you should connect orange to L, green to R, blue to V, and gray to ground. Hopefully these wire colors are consistent across all power play cables. If not, there might be some trial and error involved, but don't worry, nothing bad will happen if you wire something up the wrong way. Once you've figured out the correct order, just tighten down the screw terminals, nice and tight, and off you go. A perfectly working, if a little bulky, AV cable for the power play. For reference, what we're doing here is creating an adapter that connects tip to tip, ring one to ring two, ring two to sleeve, and sleeve to ring one. Ooh, it's a bit of a brain bender. Now, of course, if you're not afraid of the hot stick, you can make this neater and stronger with a DIY 3.5 mm jack. I picked up a set of these on Amazon, and it's fairly easy to wire up. Just don't be an idiot like me, and remember to put the sleeve on before soldering, or you too will be getting creative with the heat shrink. I'm considering hand wiring a few of these to sell on my shop, but if there's enough demand, maybe I can get a batch made up by a cable manufacturer. We'll see. So there we have it. Everything you probably never wanted to know about 3.5 mm AV cables, and finally, a reliable DIY fix. Hope you found it useful, hit subscribe to stay in the loop, and I'll catch you in the next one. Toodles.